Okay, this lecture that I'm going to give you, we have to pick up where we left off last time. We talked about trade sizing. Trade sizing is really historical volatility. And we listed some techniques. Number one technique was resistance minus support equals current volatility. We took the price and time cycle. That gives us how far the player moves on the football field. And a Bollinger Band. Well, what we did is we said last week that this is very much like football. If you take a pullback and you're on the 50-yard line and the player gets the ball or the hockey player gets the ball or the tennis player gets the ball, it might move one yard or one foot on the tennis field, a few feet on the ice. It might move 10 yards or 30 yards. This is called a dispersion zone. It's, it's a technical term. And usually most people that aren't sports oriented are school oriented. So for our non-sports fanatics out there, we call this a bell curve, a bell curve. Now they'll remember this from school. A bell curve works off of standard deviations in price, standard deviation in price. All these dispersion zones are standard deviations in price. This just means that little Johnny got an F and Becky got an A and everybody else landed in the middle. If you go to Wikipedia, um, and I'll grab this real quick on the other screen. This is a standard deviation. Bollinger Bands are based on this. 68.2% uh, are contained within the first standard deviation. What does that mean? Well, let's bring it up just so you can totally see it. We're going to come up here and we're going to go into this and we're going to bring in Bollinger Bands and we're going to throw this on there and we'll put this to two standard deviations. The top of the band to the bottom of the band is how far it moves. Okay, now as it moves, it moved right here um, 25 pips. Think of that as 25 yards. 68.2% um, of the time it will be contained in that channel. Now there's a flaw with this and it has to do with statistics in general. The best way to explain this is Back in the 60s, I know a guy who actually busted open crates of pistons for a living. And he would measure the piston from 10 different angles. He had a PhD in statistics. He'd take his little slide rule and he would calculate the overall fail point of the pistons. Overall fail point. Okay, but it's random. He did random selections. Random and then made assumptions. Assumptions. Well, guess what? Um, assumptions don't really work we right around the 90s this guy lost his job because PCs came out and did total data sampling total data sample this means that they measured every piston that came off the line well there's a method that we can use inside of our um, here and we're gonna call this a model instead of a technique a model and um, that's only his, this is his word, a model, so we're going to call it model one. We're going to say that we can go back in time, go back in time, in time, find an event, an event, and find out how far it moves. Okay, now, if we go in here, I showed you this at the very, very last, that I had some questions I wanted answered. Well, I can find out how far this thing moves based on um, excuse me, this, I can come back down here and say, well, this is a model. It's got trend direction, momentum, and location. How far did it move? I can go back in time. I can say it dropped X amount of time one time. It dropped X amount of time two times. Dropped X amount of time three times. Well, every dispersion zone, or um, I call them D zones, has a certain feature that's very, very, very similar. You have to have three data points. I'm going to draw this dispersion zone up here. You have to have what's called a min, average, and max. All right. So if you, if a hockey player, a football player, a person um, is going to do a bell curve, well, you better have three data points. Because when we figure out how far this guy moves over here, when we figure this out, he's going to move a min, average, and max. All right. It's just another way to measure the football field. Well, guess what? They're all very similar. So this thing may move a min, an average, and a max. This is important when we get into trade sizing because you have a guy, let's say that he's going to go right up the middle with the puck, okay? And he's going to skate right up the ice, and it's Wayne Gretzky, heads right up the ice, 
and he moves this up the up the field all right so here's the puck does he get it um, just a few feet a couple feet more or a couple feet more well if you totaled up all of his statistics those build a dispersion zone okay so no matter what model you use to pick them out we could measure these and see how close they are I mean let's do three of them real quick the Bollinger Band was the top to the bottom we're just going to measure this the top to the bottom up here was right here it was 24 ticks well let's just take um, resistance minus support all right looks like support is way back here so because the market just opened and it's taken off if we take this right here we're looking at 35 ticks well that's still pretty close I mean it's 35 ticks and then you could take the average now when you calculate out how far it moves one nice thing you might want to do is check time of day because time of day directly relates to and this let's put this under its own skill set in our trading playbook we actually had this in here we're going to slide this one down time of day affects movement time of day affects movement time of day affects the movement the movement because we have what's called number one the slow time the slow time number two we have the news time which is hyper fast and then we have the bank opens okay bank opens well volatility changes all the time so um bank opens um if you're not a sports fan i hope you are because it's easier to explain it's like a pinch hitter if you bring your pinch hitter in you expect him to perform better okay so um at certain time of day our sampling of these methods needs to change or needs to reflect what we think will happen so one of the things that we can do is say well tell me computer um, between eight o'clock and nine o'clock and nine o'clock how far it moves how far how far it moves between these times between these times this is important because we have to change our models this has to do with time of day all right now the second thing we have to cover before we get into this is trade management how are we going to overcome our loss and I'm going to put trade psychology in here too um, because we're going to have to come back and touch on this we're going to get to this last trade psychology all right so what we're going to have to figure out in here is this all right now um, how am I going to overcome a loss well first off there are four or five six different ways okay how am I gonna fix a loss I can increase the size of the position people that trade stocks do this like when coal stocks reach their book value there's a lot of coal stocks at book value right now they increase the size of their position they can um, but you're limited to money you can increase the size of your target but you're limited to the ATR that's how far it moves per day so we might as well throw an ATR up here as a technique of a measurement of price over time because we can say an ATR really is price over one day all right so how far it moves per day how far it moves per day is called a ATR okay or or price over one day price over one day all right so these are topics that go into your playbook now as we come down here we can say if I increase my target um, to make back my loss and I'll give you examples of this below it's limited to how far it'll move we can hedge hedging is limited to um, where you live so it has a limit you know it's nice if you're not an American um, not Americans can do this um, we can trade better um, we can limit it to a streak this is limited to the streaks like I win six streets in a row we can decrease the stop but that's limited to Brownian motion and there's a formula for that but it's a little much for today we increase the risk that's limited to the amount of money we have but one of the most important parts of this is an expression here that we can use it's called the transitive properties of math okay if we take a target of 20 pips and one dollar a tick okay lots of point one one dollar a tick and an equal distance stop of 20 these we're gonna call our benchmark all right these little things I'm gonna benchmark them I'm gonna call benchmark benchmark I'm actually gonna tab them over we're gonna say this is something I'm gonna start with now what if I lose on this 
okay I lose and I lose twenty dollars so it move it moves on me and I have a target and stop that are equal distance I lose twenty bucks that's a bummer how am I gonna get it back okay so I'm gonna lose twenty dollars loss of twenty all right now if you take targets times lots so this is your target which was 20 pips 20 pips times the lots of um, one or two okay look we're gonna look at this formula this isn't what we did but this formula expresses something wonderful to us we're actually gonna put this up and we'll say we did do it we'll be down 40 bucks okay so a loss of 40 now an equal distance 40 pip stop now we're going to go through some examples of this of how to overcome things because I have to teach you something about a spreadsheet so if I take a target and the target I really say is um, 20 pips uh, 40 pips that's the first one we did it's 40 pips uh, 20 pips let's do this one it's 20 pips times two dollars a lot that equals 40 bucks okay now if I take the target the original one we had a target and instead of 20 pips we go for 40 pips at one dollar tick that's 40 bucks well this means one trade one trade overcomes my loss um, now the what happens is I can do something I can say well what would happen if I increase my target by 1.5 percent off the benchmark okay and increase my lot size by 1.5% and decrease my stop by 18% decrease. Uh, these are this is transitive um, transitive properties of math. So decrease my stop. Now this is hard to follow unless you have a math background. But if you take my original 40 pips and I'm going to increase this by 1.5. Okay, so I'm going instead of 40 pips now I'm going to let it go up 1.5 pips. 40 times 1.5 comes out to 60 pips 60 pips this is my new target now this must be under must be under daily ATR daily ATR okay this is just an example we're not saying to do this it's an example now so my new target is 60 pips my lot size is now 1.5 because I increased its 1 times 1.5 it's 1.5 dollars okay so lots lots is a 0.15 and the dollar value dollar value is 1.5 okay and then we take in my stop well my stop if I take 40 pips and I times it by 18 percent 40 times 18 this would be I'm going to decrease my stop by 0.72 40 minus um, 40 minus 7 we're going to say we're going to decrease our stop to 33 pips now if I win if I win on this let's look what happens I'm in the hole 40 bucks if I win I'm gonna win at 40 times or um, 60 pips times a dollar fifty I'm gonna win 90 bucks I'm down 40 I overcome my loss okay so I I overcome my loss it's gone it's erased if I lose I'll lose 1.5 times um, 33 pips I'm gonna lose $49 slightly more money okay we could have left it the same but um, to get this exact to express what I'm showing up there you could come in and if I wanted to get 40 bucks back I could actually do um, a couple things this put me over what I needed so let's assume that I need to make um, approximately um, 40 pips back and my original 40 target well if my my original 40 pips plus target I'm really really close to this because I took 1.5 per 1.5 times the 60 pips I'm gonna make 90 bucks so I don't have to go quite that high I guess that off the top of my head from doing this so let's say 40 pips times 1.4 is 56 pips times 1.4 76 bucks let's say 56 pips times 1.5 84 dollars that's pretty close we could get pretty sophisticated so what we're saying is let's only increase this to 56 pips okay you can actually take the computer and I had to do this longhand the computer can actually balance this out and say increase your lots just a little bit why is that important 
oh man, do we need to talk on the phone? This is the most important spreadsheet. And I am 100% sure I'll get this put online somehow for you to fill this out. If you make $5,000 a month, your daily loss is 250 bucks. These columns right here, right here, represent your fear factor. And I found that 99% of the people I help will land between a month's wages and a day's wages. Now, what you're going to do is this is a mini account. It's set to $1. This is the current price of euro. This is the price, um, the margin level, depending on if you're Canadian. Now, these all the things in um, green you can change. Now, I'm not saying that these are perfect. You can change them by yourself. Okay, now. I will give you some very, very crazy examples of this, and then I'll forward some of this stuff to you. What we're going to do is we're going to say, I, want, I think I'm a terrible trader. Well, at first, we're going to plan on you losing 14 trades in a row. Well, if I risk $5 a tick, okay, $5 a tick, $5 a tick, um, that's 5 bucks a tick, that's my starting tick value, and my stop is 20 pips. Well, where did I get this 20 pips? I had to pick one of our um, methodologies. So I came up here and I said, price cycle and time cycle on the euro, on the euro, during the slowest time of the night, the slowest time of night, time of night is about 18 pips. Okay, so I'm picking method two to size my trade to. I'm going to add the spread, add the spread because if you look at a chart in MetaTrader, the spread actually um, is not included on the chart. The charts are called bid price charts. So your indicators are always off by two pips. Now you're going to have to watch this video a couple times to get it because we're keeping a wicked fast pace right here. All right. And I can't talk to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you this. And if I can talk to you, great. But I'm going to record it this first time and then you can come with a plethora of questions. All right, so we're sizing it to 20 pips and we're putting a starting tick value of four. Well, if that's the case, when I get down, when do I lose 1%? Okay, when do I lose 1%? All right, and I've got to make sure that I did this right. I want to make sure at 1% starting lot sizes, M4 divided by C5, M4 divided by C5. Where's M4? M4 divided by C5. That's divided by one. And we want to be down 1% risk right here. And let's double check this, make sure this is all right, because it didn't total up right on the bottom. It totaled up that it's five, five, and five all the way down. There is a, a dragging error, I'll bet. And I will have to find it. Um, I'll pause it and fix this. Okay, I found the little problem. What, what this does is here in the middle, right here these are remember i was showing you the trans the transient properties of math which is a lot to cover in these areas we said in our mathematical formula that we came down here and we said you know what what if i come down and say well let's increase our target by 1.5 percent these were just examples but i'm going to give you an example let's increase the target by 18 percent every time we lose we're going to increase our target by 18 percent but it cannot go over the ATR for the day. So what I did while we were on pause is I said, well, look, a daily ATR is 1.11 and we're actually gonna leave it at half. So this is my target. Originally my target was 20 pips. It went to 24, to 28, to 33, to 39, to 46. Okay, and then it stopped. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna just for the heck of it, I'm gonna increase my stop by 18%. Well, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna decrease my stop by um, 12% every time I lose okay but I cannot get any closer than about two ATRs each ATR is um, four to five pips that's about the limit of how close I can get it now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase my lot size every time I lose now every time I lose I'm gonna increase this and I'm gonna do this up to 14 times okay oops we're going to grab this again, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. Now, I'm not saying to do this. I want to explain something to you. There's a purpose to this. Okay. Now, if I come over here, and I'll give you an example of that, because this was right. It was just set to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 
if I start out at 0.02 lot size, okay, my starting tick value is 0.02, oh, I'm going to be playing for a cumulative profit of 40 cents. Nicholas, nobody in their right mind trades for 40 cents. That's insane. It's totally insane. But when I lose 14 in a row with that kind of sizing, I'm going to lose approximately 1%. 1.59, approximately 1%. Now, um, if I, because I, we rounded this up, I couldn't start the lot size at 0 0.17 because it only got to 0.1. So I rounded it up. That's why it's off a little bit. Now, if I decide that I wanted to start at, at $3.33 and I come in here $3.33, well, now I'm going to win 60 bucks, but to overcome my loss, if I take more than um, a couple losses in a row, I'm down 15% on my whole account. So let this column right here is what we're looking at is losses in percent of account, net profit, cumulative loss, and gross profit. Now, what we've done is we basically come in here and said, you know what, I have to deal with this straight up. Straight up. I have to come in and say, how am I going to overcome my loss? Well, this spreadsheet's a research tool. All I've done is increase my target, decrease my lots. I don't expect you to learn this right away. Okay. The spreadsheet, though, is critical thinking environment. Because how do we get back our loss? Well, we, we use it. Well, we express this by slightly increasing or decreasing our size. Now, we have to go over to our teeter-totter, all right? And our teeter-totter's on this slide. We said, we'll I have to balance the need to make money. Well, there's no way in hell you're going to work for 60 cents. So let's, let's I'm going to copy our teeter-totter, and I'm going to design this. I'm going to copy it. Now, there's no way that you're going to work for 60 cents. This is the power of Forex and the power of um, computers, okay? Because how am I going to balance my teeter-totter? All right, I'm going to throw this down here, and I have to balance the teeter-totter. And this expresses the, the best part of Forex and the very worst part of Forex. Okay, if I come in here and I have this need to make money and I won't work for 60 cents and I oversize my trade and I push the teeter-totter down on this side. So I say, I'm not willing to work for 60 cents. Well, when I lose, I could quickly be up to huge percents of my account using any of these methods to overcome loss okay now you you have an advantage because you're a foreigner we, we haven't discussed hedging yet we can do some of that but the loss in the account is six percent or six hundred dollars on a ten thousand dollar account that's very 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 unappealing so let's bring it down here and say well i'm a really terrible trader i have a bad model and let's tip this back the other direction okay we're going to say our teeter-totter now moves this way it moves down well, if my teeter-totter moves down this direction and I start at 0.02 lot sizes, 0.02, well, then I'm working for 60 cents. Well, that doesn't work either, okay, because it pushes it out. So how do we balance it? The balancing factor on this teeter-totter is the PC. There are some models that you can use, and not all of them um, use this. I have seven models I trade, and they all use different ways to overcome loss. I'm just showing you a classic one. So how do I how do I bounce this? Remember I told you this orange line was the most critical line or a very critical one on here? The reason is we can say, computer, you trade for me up to this orange line. And when we hit this orange line, when we hit this, I want the computer to call and tell me that there's an issue. Okay, computer, you call and tell me that there's an issue. All right, you tell me that there's one. So when we hit this point, we set alerts. And so what happens is if I'm trading for 59 cents, I don't want to be alerted there. I don't want to be alerted there. I may be alerted at the 14th loss. Now, this is super conservative, like sickly conservative. Okay, this is just so conservative. There's no way that you would size to that. So let's go to the medium sizing then. To, we're going to start at 20 cents a tick instead of 2 cents a tick. We're going to start at 20 cents. Well, we'll let the computer trade until maybe it hits $100 in 30 minutes. Now the 
an alarm would go off to alert you to this okay so when you size something you need to size it to what's going to happen so the bouncing factor in is the the bouncing on the teeter-totter is the pc the trade psychology is this i will not work for 60 cents for 60 cents an hour a hour no way no way okay i cannot work for 180 because i'm going to take a loss i'm going to take too many losses take too many losses too many losses okay now if i take too many losses what we do is we run the computer we have the computer trade have the computer trade have the computer trade for us trade for us okay that's what we're going to do we're going to have the computer trade for us to a certain level now we can start to talk okay i'm going to stop this one save it. it's 25 minutes long and then i'm going to readdress some stuff with you okay